Perashiot Chukat Balak Makam Mahur. Today, the 11th day of the month of Tammuz, the third day of July 2020. Today's class has been graciously sponsored by Mr. Jack Dweck and family, Le'ilu Nishmat, his beloved mother, Miriam Bat Sarah, upon being this Shabbat, the day of Heraskara, Iratzon, that through the words of Torah, her neshama will have an uh, aliyah. And also interesting, today we have an additional sponsor uh, for the class, uh, Mr. Mauricio Kravitz from Mexico, that sponsoring the class, La'ilu Inishmat Aharon Rafael Ben Yeshayahu. So both of them have the yard site on Shabbat Kodesh. So therefore we're dedicating the class of today and tomorrow Shabbat at the synagogue uh, before Arvid, also Le'ilui Nishmatam. So everybody, Baruch Hashem, uh, has a zechuyot to share with the respective beloved relatives. With that being said, let's try to put together a very beautiful Zohar of today, connecting both Perashiot, Perashat Hukat and Perashat Balak. We already know that the highlight of Perashat Hukat, among the many topics that I found, is the topic of the Parah Duma that we discussed in the earlier part of the week. The Zohar Kadosh now comes and talks about the concept of bathing and preparing ourselves for Shabbat Kodesh. Interesting enough, for those who follow the track of the Daf Yomi, for the past few days, I have not done today's Daf yet, uh, but yesterday and the day before and the day before, the Gemara has been discussing the idea of Shabbat Kodesh, the amount of breads that we need to have for a Mosi, how many se'udot we do for a Mosi, how far does a person can go in order to honor the Shabbat, or what's the minimum that a person can do in honor to, in order rather, to honor the Shabbat. So all that is clearly discussed in Gemara, in Masechet Shabbat. But today we'll discuss an area that it is mentioned in the Talmud, it is mentioned in the Halakha, but we don't really speak much about it. But today, the Zohar happens to talk about it. So therefore, we'll devote a few short moments to understand the concept of bathing. And in the days that things were uh, a bit more uh, calm and healthy, going to the mikveh in honor of Shabbat Kodesh. That thousands upon thousands of uh, men do or did, perhaps we can say, until further notice, so far all men mikvehs to our knowledge, at least in our state, uh, are completely closed down since uh, Purim time or the week after Purim. But by Zat Hashem, let us discuss quickly the Zohar of today. So the Zohar explains that there is a reason why the Allah says bathe and go to the mikveh in honor of Shabbat. Now, the bathing, I understand. Why? Because obviously what I'm wearing now, I will not be wearing Be'ezat Hashem tonight. I go, finish, prepare for Shabbat, take a shower, put on clean clothing. But let's clarify that the reason why the Alakha speaks as part of the ceremonial preparation for Shabbat is to take a shower and go into the mikveh if possible again. If you cannot go, if you never went, this is not the time to start. But the Zohar explains that, remember that last week we mentioned the importance of a person not wearing the garments that he or she wore during Friday day, but actually change the garments in honor of Shabbat. Obviously, it doesn't mean that you need to wait till five minutes before candle lighting. There are many holy wives of Am Israel that they may 
bathe or take a shower uh, midday or early afternoon, and for them, they already are on Shabbat mode. But let's talk in the case of a man, for example, right? The idea is clearly that the garments that we wore during the weekday, we remove them, we put them on the side, and we wear garments which are earmarked in honor of Shabbat. Doesn't mean that this suit can only be worn during Shabbat. Sometimes people use a Shabbat suit to go to a wedding. But the idea is that it's not the same garment that we wore during the week. And the reason why the halakha is so strong in this matter, to the point, I don't think I said this back then, but I'm going to say it now, so then we go into the bathing and taking a shower, etc. When it comes to Melave Malka, Melave Malka, we know that this is the fourth Se'uda that a person does on Mosa'e Shabbat. Some people call it Se'uda Revi'it, the fourth meal, meaning to say, Se'uda Shilishid was Shabbat afternoon, Saturday night, Mosa'e Shabbat is Se'uda Revi'it, or Melave Malka, escorting the queen. Like I welcome the Shabbat with Kiddush, with wine and a Sauda. When I say goodbye to the Shabbat, I do have the law on wine and I also have a Sauda. Ideally, the Lacha writes, bread should be eaten on Mosa'e Shabbat. If not, Mezonot. If not, a fruit. And everybody agrees that it's beneficial for the body and for the soul to eat something on Mosai Shabbat and to drink something hot or to take a shower on Mosai Shabbat. Most people probably do have something hot and the Gemara brings even a benefit to the body. As the Gemara writes, Hamin be Mosai Shabbat, something hot on Saturday night, Melugma brings healing to the body. But there is an interesting halacha in the topic of Melave Malka the Mosa'e Shabbat meal, that the Lacha discusses what is the ideal time to say, to do, rather, Melave Malka. When is the ideal time? So there are a few opinions in the Halacha. One opinion says, four hours within the end of Shabbat. So let's say that tomorrow, by us, Shabbat finishes nine o'clock in the evening, so we have till one o'clock to do the Sauda Melave Malka. That's considered ideal. What if you cannot? Let's say it's the winter. Then instead of Shabbat finishes at, at nine, it finishes at 5.30 or six. So technically you'll have till 10. The second opinion says you can do it till midnight. Midnight tomorrow, it will be in Miami, I think at around 1.20 a.m. What if for some reason you couldn't do it? You can do it till Alot Shahar. But an interesting concept, the Lacha writes, that it is preferable for the person when possible, and I clarify, it is not mandatory. It doesn't mean that let's say that uh, 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 you have a wedding or you have a bar mitzvah to go, in those days at least, when we used to go to events late at night, etc., you cannot change and put on a tuxedo or put on a different garment, has shalom. But if possible, you should eat melave malka, mosa'e shabbat garment, mosa'e shabbat meal, with the food that you were wearing throughout the shabbat. Why there is such a concept? Short answer, because the garments of shabbat absorb from the sanctity of the Shabbat. And now we are able to understand retroactively what I said before, how important it is that a person does not pray Shabbat prayers, especially Friday night, with the same garment that absorb from the mundane aura of the day of Hol, of the weekday. Some people have this man-made tradition which seems to be from Alaha, not really a good one, to 
stay with a garment that they wore Friday morning till Friday night. And then the next morning, Shabbat, they put on a nice suit or a nice jacket in honor of Shabbat. My dear friend, if this is your tradition, I think that in honor of Shabbat, Chukat Balak, try to welcome the Shabbat properly with the garments. Imagine you're going to meet somebody, Hashuv, you're going to meet somebody important. Are you going to go in in a sporty way? Obviously not. You're going to go presentable. So I'm Abdil. If this is that we do for a human being, how much more we need to do to greet the holy presence of Hashem into our homes, into our lives, in honor of Shabbat. With all that being said, the Zohar Kadosh says that when we bathe and go to the mikveh, if possible, in honor of Shabbat Kodesh, we are removing the aura that surrounds our body throughout the entire days of the week. And the Zohar Kadosh explains, when Shabbat Kodesh comes, Am Israel need to bathe themselves and purify themselves from the aura of impurity that roams throughout the world and affects the Jewish people also during the weekday. And this is Hamavdil. I'm going to bring an example. How different is the prayer of weekday and the prayer of Shabbat? The prayer of weekday, it's usually quick. I cannot tell you minutes. Each synagogue and each minyan has their parameters, but it's quick, moved on, not singing, in and out, whatever that means. On Shabbat, it's a whole different story. We start the prayer much later, unless you pray nets, then you have a fixed schedule and you sing and Sefer Torah and it's like no rush to go anywhere and you enjoy the prayer hopefully. Obviously Hazanim and Rabbis need to be conscientious on the aspect of time. But with all that being said, we all understand that we begin from the Korbanot, Hodu, Zemirot, Hallelujah, Nishmat, Hazara, Kohanim, whatever beautiful prayers our synagogues worldwide offer in honor of Shabbat. Now, why do we do that? Why? Short answer, because of the Kedusha of the Shabbat and the push to get us out of the synagogue because we need to run to school or we need to do carpool and we need to go to the office, which again, all these words that I'm just telling you now, now they became part of the dictionary. There are no schools and no carpools, and a lot of people are working remotely. But yet, on Shabbat, we take time. Where do we get that strength from? So the Zohar says that during the week, there is like a major force that wants to get us out of the synagogues. Yani, finish, run. Where are you going? I don't know. So why you take the tefillin after uh, uh, Ashre? Wh wh where are you running to? No office, no school, no carpool. No, that's my tradition. Heck it. What would you, you just made up your own minhagim? So the Zohar Kadosh explains that in order to prepare our body physically and spiritually, we bathe ourselves. In the olden days, it used to be the hand, the face, and the feet, and private parts, because people needed to boil the water and prepare themselves. It was a whole Megillah. But today, Baruch Hashem, everybody has running water at home. You have hot and cold. And you have Baruch Hashem. So the Zohar Kadosh explains that what happens when a person comes out of the shower? You feel fresh. 
you feel rejuvenated. Your skin looks nicer. Your skin looks smoother. So the Zohar Kadosh explains all these physical reactions that we experience to the body in a way cleanses the neshama of the weekday, let's call them oxygen, and then we are ready to welcome the neshama yetera. This is something fascinating, that something so basic and common can have such a powerful effect on the life of the person. The Zohar Kadosh explains, and it says as follows, all the days of the week are connected to a different sefira. If you remember, this topic was discussed throughout the week, the weeks rather, of Omer. And we mentioned how every week has one particular sefira, which be, means a way that Hashem represents Himself into the world. So if we need to make this uh, chart, it will be like Shabbat is the day of Malchut. Malchut means kingdom, which this brings us what we mentioned two weeks ago concerning Selofhad. Remember Selofhad? Selofhad, there were different opinions in the Talmud. What was the actual sin that he committed? Is the fellow that went out on Shabbat and desecrated the Shabbat properly. And everyone agrees that the intentions of Selofhad were Leshem Shamaim. Where do we know this? Short answer, because the Torah protected his identity. The Torah did not say the name, but him say, O Ish, Ish, a man. Ish in our Torah usually means someone very, very special. As the Talmud says, Selofhad Leshem Shamayim Itkaven. What prompted Selofhad to act in such a heroic way? And the Talmud says, the intentions of Selofhad were holy. Now, what intentions could be holy when you are openly desecrating the Shabbat? You're being told don't do it, you're being told, you are breaking the Shabbat, you may be executed, and yet Selofhad continue, he did it, and we all know the unfortunate end of Selofhad life. The background of the story of Selofhad is, this was the second Shabbat after the Torah was given. And Selofhad saw how people were really neglecting the Shabbat. Yani for them, Shabbat, Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday was exactly the same in the people's conduct. Yes, there was one difference the Talmud said in the Daf Yomi of yesterday, I believe, that the man came, or yesterday, yes, yesterday, yes, that the man came double portion on Friday. Every other day of the week, the man came down single portion for that day. On Friday, came double. But Selofhad sees that people are not taking the Shabbat seriously. Now, what was the transgression that Selofhad committed? So the Talmud brings a few opinions. One opinion says he cut down branches from trees, whatever they had in those days. Other opinion says he gathered small pieces uh, of trees or wood in order to ignite a fire, etc. But you know what the Zohar Kadosh writes? The Zohar Kadosh says that the transgression that Selofhad committed was to talk about topics which are not allowed to be discussed on the Shabbat. Divre Hol, the Zohar says. That's the Zohar Kadosh, black and white. So there's no Midrash, I heard, somebody told me. It's written very simple. Selofhad talked about mundane topics on Shabbat. For example, money, investment, financial deals, etc. You may say, why was there a need to Selofhad to speak about business on Shabbat? Or your question may be even stronger. Rabbi, you're gonna tell me that because of talking 
business on Shabbat, a person needs to be executed, has the shalom. But we need to be honest with ourselves. Like there is a prohibition, or, or, or let me paraphrase this, like the concept of Shabbat observance is through the way we celebrate the Shabbat. We eat more, the way the Talmud says, three saudot on a Shabbat, we eat bread, we make the Kiddush, we say Shalom Aleichem, we have a beautiful meal. Now we're learning the importance of bathing to purify our body and our soul to be able to be a clean recipient of the new Neshama. Imagine yourself, you're gonna to go to a wedding or you're gonna to go to a farah and you're gonna put a beautiful suit, but you did not take a shower that day. It doesn't make sense. Usually normal people, 99.9, .9, what they do, they'll take a good shower, they clean themselves, they, they feel good, and then they put on the beautiful suit. Same thing with the Neshama. So let's go to Selof Had. The Zohar Kadosh writes clearly, and it's actually Pesukim scattered, that part of the observance of the Shabbat is not the ceremonial only. It's not, oh, I'm not going to work, I'm not using the cell phone, I'm not checking the emails, I'm not texting. That's beautiful and that's for sure. But part of the observance of the Shabbat is how we speak. And that's why the Navi Yeshaya says, Bedaver Davar. You're going to say this tomorrow in the Kiddush. Meaning to say that also what we talk about on Shabbat has an influence on the sanctity of the Shabbat. And I'm sure that it's not the first time you hear about this. And I'm talking to a wonderful audience that if you log in to itorah.com to listen to a Torah class, it means that Baruch Hashem, you love Torah and you want to hear Torah, etc. Which is great and keep doing that. Doesn't matter who the speaker is. They are all wonderful, they are all great, they are wonderful, wonderful Talmideh Hachamim. At the end of the day, the Talmud writes, all the roadways lead to Yerushalayim. If you listen to this speaker or to that speaker, it doesn't matter. The main thing is, listen. The more we listen, the better. But, there's always a but. Remember what I said before, that the days of the week have a certain sefira connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu? We all agree that the Sefira of Shabbat is the Sefira of Malchut because it's the day of the week that Hashem's kingdom is revealed to the entire world. Hashem Malach Geut Lavesh, the chapter of Tehillim that we recite every Shabbat after Mizmor Shir Leyom Shabbat. So if you want to understand, if you want to sense a level of godliness that is revealed more one day of the week than the other, Shabbat is the day. Ba'a Shabbat, Ba'a Menuha. Shabbat, Shalom, as we learned last week, how these two names, these two words, Shabbat, Shalom, are actually names of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So we all agree that on Shabbat, there is a revealed essence of godliness through our body, and to our soul. Hence, we have something called, we all get it, Neshama Yetera. Neshama Yetera, although it means the extra Neshama, is not the extra Neshama. It's actually the supplement to our Neshama. What does this mean? The same way that marriage is the supplement, the supplement of the Neshamot, meaning to say, part of the neshama of the husband and part of the neshama of the wife and both have become one whole in our and that's why the talmud writes that a person that is not married yet and we take the opportunity to wish uh, all the single young men and young ladies that by Zat hashem atadosh baruch hu send them the nasiv atadosh baruch hu send, send them the, 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 the uh, shiduch the, the soulmate as we say in english uh, to, to, to really develop their potential that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave them throughout life. Now, with that being said, on, during the weekday, we have a fraction, if we can say, I cannot say the word percentage, 
because I don't know what percentage we may have. We can throw a number. Yeah, 50% of our neshama is with us during the weekday. But then when Shabbat comes, I receive my other half, my other additional half that is the chip in our spirit that stops me from working of doing things which are not allowed to be done on Shabbat and to enjoy and to celebrate and to be happy on the day of Shabbat Kodesh. Now, with that being said, do you remember what part of the human body represents the Sefirah of Malchut? If in the calendar Malchut represents Shabbat, Saturday, what part of the body represents the essence of kingdom? I said this two days ago. Short answer, you know the answer. The mouth of the person, Malchut, the mouth of the person, it's here. And that's why there's so many issues, regretfully, in Shalom Bayit. And not only with attitudes, by the way the husband and wife communicate with each other. And their marriages, that if they will work in this particular aspect of not hurting their spouse verbally and being a bit more positive and being or exercising, so to speak, a bit more of self-control in the vocal delivery, so to speak, guess what? The Shalom Bayit disasters and dramas will go down tremendously. How many times people tell me, I don't like the way he speaks to me. I don't like the way she speaks to me. Let's clarify. It's not a man's problem only or a lady's problems only. Has the shalom, it all depends on the person themselves. Sometimes could be the husband that needs to have a bit more of self-control. Sometimes could be the wife. But here we're not playing the blaming game. Here we're trying to put together what exactly happened in a way with Shabbat Malchut, the mouth Malchut, and Selofhan. Now we are able to understand. And later on, next week, uh, not next week, two weeks from now, when the Torah talks about uh, the daughters of Selofhan, actually, that came to Moshe Rabbeinu and discussed the topic of the inheritance of the land of Israel, what is the opening statement of the daughters of Selofhad? They say, Avinu met Bamidbar, Behulu Aya Ba'adat Korah, Ki Behet O Met. It says, Our father, they say to Moshe Rabbeinu, died in the desert. But why he died in the desert? He did not die because of the rebellion of Korah. He did not die because of the story of the spies that happened later. Ki behet o met. He made one sin. And in the entire Torah, the only time in the desert that we find that a person committed a transgression, and I'm not talking about the Megadev, the one who ordered a blasphemy to God, but in the case of the normalcy of Am Israel, it was Selofhad. And you may ask yourself, but Rabbi, why did he commit such a suicide a, a mission? Short answer, because he saw how people were neglecting the holiness of the Shabbat, which is definitely words of Hizuk to us, to understand that if taking a shower in honor of Shabbat can enhance and can remove the impurities of the week and welcome the sanctity of the Shabbat, imagine yourself how much more the sanctity of the Shabbat can be determined if the topics that we speak on Shabbat are conducive to the holiness of the Shabbat or basically I'm eating a delicious Shabbat meal but my mind is in a real estate transaction or my mind 
is in a stock investment, etc. This is the mindset that I believe the Zohar is trying to deliver to us and help us understand the Kedusha of the uh, Shabbat. And guess what? We, and I say we, I mean all of us, looks forward for the sanctity and the arrival of the Shabbat. Is actually part of our daily prayers. Towards the end of the prayers, second half of the prayer, we say something called Shir Shel Yom, the song of the day that the Leviim used to sing in the Beit HaMikdash and every chapter that connects to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. has a direct connection to that particular day, which today is not the topic. But when it comes to the opening statement of the song of the day, what do we say? For example, Hayom Yom Echad Beshabbat Kodesh. Ashir Shehayu Aleviim Ombrim Ala Duchan. Today is Sunday of Shabbat. Rohi, I'm still digesting the Mahshi from yesterday. And already on Sunday morning, you're telling me, remember, six days from now will be Shabbat. Guess what? Every time we do this, according to some Allahic authorities, we are fulfilling a positive commandment of Zachor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadesho. Remember the day of Shabbat to sanctify it. But you may say, Rabbi, today is only Sunday. The Talmud tells us that Shammai, the great Shammai, used to go to the marketplace Sunday. He would look for the most wonderful type of meal or meat or whatever it may have been in those days. And he will say, this is in honor of Shabbat. Imagine you go to buy avocados, right? I think we can relate to that. And they are very hard means that if you want to have an avocado for today or for tomorrow, you cannot have a super hard type of avocado. What usually do you do or people do? They buy it Tuesday, Wednesday. They put it in a paper bag, correct? At least that's what we do at home. And then it will be ripe for Friday or for Shabbat. So Shammai used to go to the marketplace, buy a very hard avocado, or green bananas, so to speak, and have it ready for Shabbat. But guess what? On Monday, he used to go to the market again. And on Tuesday, again. You may say, Rabbi, come on. I said, but this is what the Talmud is teaching us. And why such a desire for the Shabbat? I'll tell you the short answer. Because the weekday element the way we live it's not the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is shabbat umnuha lehaye haolamim the neshama craves for having shabbat mode all week long which will happen by Ezat Hashem upon Mashiach's arrival and Hashem should bless us that this happens speedily in our uh, day. This is how the Zohar of Perashat Hukat concludes. So if we did not know this, but we used to take a shower, so by Ezat Hashem later on today, when we're going to take a shower and prepare for Shabbat, let's try of thinking, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. Many people, have a beautiful tradition that we're going to eat something on Shabbat. They say, Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. It is not mandatory, but it's a beautiful way of enhancing the sanctity of the Shabbat. Why? Because we need to know, like, like our body gets this upgrade on Shabbat by welcoming the additional part of our Neshama, the food the Sa'udot that we eat on a Shabbat also has a certain level of Kedusha. It's not the same that you ate something on a Tuesday 
or you eat something on a Shabbat. Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hasira, in the Pituhe Hotam, he writes that even eating the meal, or oh, let me go back, even eating leftovers from Shabbat on the weekday, it brings sanctity of the Shabbat in the human body. Why? Short answer. Because of the Kedusha of Shabbat permeates the food, permeates the home, permeates the Shabbat table. So you know, when our holy wives prepare the food in honor of Shabbat, and they have this in mind, I'm going to make this for Shabbat dinner, I'm going to make this for Shabbat lunch, that is also ways of honoring the Kedusha of the Shabbat. Like the famous story, I think, that happened with Rabbi Yehuda Nasi and the Caesar. That once the Caesar came to visit Rabbi Yehuda Nasi and he served them a beautiful, delicious meal. And the Caesar is, asked Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, please tell me uh, what is the, the components, the ingredients of this delicious meal? And he tells him, let's bring the chef. And the chef says, okay, I put some uh, oregano. I put the uh, parsley, I put some uh, whatever spices are there, I throw in a pinch of Shabbat into the meal. Oh, wow. And the uh, Caesar takes note and he goes back to Rome and tells his chef, here is the recipe that the chef of Rabbi Uda Nasi, my dear friend, gave me. Please follow it, I want to try it. And this chef of the Caesar was tap, 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 tap of the line chef and bottom line he tries week after week week after week and he says my master i went all over i found all the ingredients but i did not find the spice calls shabbat he says okay maybe the builder hanasi grows it in his backyard i'll ask him to give me some because it's missing it's missing he goes back to Rabbi Yudha Nasi, the Caesar, and it says, Rabbi, I found all the items, but I could not find Shabbat. Where do you get it from? Can I order it online? Rabbi Yudha Nasi says, Rohi, Shabbat is not a spice. Shabbat is the sanctity of Akadosh Baruch Hu that comes down and visits us in honor of Shabbat Kodesh. The Caesar realized that the essence of the Shabbat it's a gift for Am Israel. As we mentioned yesterday, Beni Uben Bene Israel Ot Hi Le'olam. The day of Shabbat is a covenant for Am Israel. That's why a Goy cannot observe the Shabbat. Even a Gentile that may consider converting, although for us, there is no such a thing, but I'm just talking to the general population of the world. A Gentile wants to become a Jew, male or female, doesn't matter. Besides learning Torah that they must do for a while to understand what they're getting into after the rabbis follows the proper protocol, they need to see Shabbat live. No can just talk about it and listen about it. So they will be invited to a Jewish home for Shabbat. But part of the protocol of conversion is that that Gentile, men or women, will turn on the light on Shabbat so it will be considered like they desecrated the Shabbat, so to speak, and will not be considered like if a Gentile observed the Shabbat on its entirety. Now, why? Because the essence of the Shabbat is a gift given or it's a covenant, is the connector between Akadosh Baruch Hu and Am Israel. The Zohar now, part two, talks about how much Beracha comes down to the world on the day of Shabbat, which is very fascinating. Why? Because on the day of Shabbat, we don't work. Okay, rabbis do work, but okay, we work a different type of work, okay? That is seven days a week. 
But as far as concerned, Beracha, the Zohar Kadosh writes, the Mine Midbarechin Kol Yeme Shiva, that from the blessing of the Shabbat, the entire week gets a blessing. So what does this mean? That actually today, at this moment, will be considered the final few hours of this week that started last Friday night, last Shabbat night. So I wrap up this week in the next few hours, take a shower, get dressed, go to shul, and now I'm ready to welcome the new week. So then you may ask and a very good question. If that's the case, why don't I say Shavua Tov on a Friday night? Why do I wait till Saturday night after Shabbat finish to say Shavua Tov and we answer back Shavua Tov Umevorach? You should have a, a good week and a blessful week. Now, the answer to that question is very simple. Because Saturday night, Mosa'e Shabbat, is the first hour of the new week that I'm able to become involved in financial matters. Meaning to say, I started the Shabbat with zero contact or concept or discussion about finances, about real estate, about purchases, about trading, nothing. Holiness, prayer, eating, sleeping, Torah learning, obviously, etc. Singing, important as well, in honor of Shabbat. Now Saturday night comes, I made Abdallah, that's the reason why many wonderful people have the custom of saying the prayer of Ve'iten Lecha Elokim, which is found in the end of the, after Abdallah in most of the Sidurim, which are all verses of well-being physical, financial, emotional, protection, salvation, Mashiach survival, and the ultimate blessing, the blessing of peace with ourselves, with our spouses, and with everyone that surrounds us. And that is the powerful message that the Zohar delivers today says don't waste the Shabbat sleeping. Of course, of course, I'll be the first one to tell you that the sleeping of the Shabbat has a special flavor. You take a nap on Shabbat, something that most of us do only during Shabbat and not during the week, but the nap of Shabbat, it takes that flavor, which by the way, I personally, when I go take a nap on Shabbat afternoon, I say two things. Lichvot Shabbat Kodesh. I'm taking a nap in honor of Shabbat. And I also make a personal prayer. God, make sure that I listen to the Shabbat friendly alarm clock to wake up early enough for the class and for prayers, etc. Now you may say, but Rabbi, why is there a need to take a nap on Shabbat? It's an excellent question. I think maybe something natural that we all look forward after and heavier than usual meal, as the Talmud discusses in Shabbat, the amount of meals that they used to give to the needy, two meals for weekday, three meals for Shabbat. Today, even the weekday is for three meal, but if you look at the word Shabbat, Shabbat has a lot of meanings. One is Shabbat, Saturday. Hence the word sabbatical, Sabbath observance. That's one. Shabbat, without the accent, it means like a strike. Strike, not going to work today. Shabbat, Shabbat in Hebrew. Also Shabbat is a Rashi Tevot, Shina, be Shabbat Ta'anuk. Sleeping on Shabbat, it's enjoyable. Other opinions say, Shina be Shabbat Ta'anug. And sleeping on the, learning Torah on the Shabbat, it also brings pleasure 
to the neshama, to the person. So sleeping is for the body and the learning is for the neshama. That is the reason why it is imperative that every one of us, male or female, at home or at the synagogue, to learn Torah on Shabbat. Because not only that learning Torah undiluted, okay, without looking at the clock or without checking the text messages or without interrupting, is a, a, a beautiful Torah learning that it's more powerful on the neshama of the person learning half an hour, 45 minutes without interruption, that learning 15 minutes with a two minute break in between. It's like you have a solid piece of cheese or you have shredded cheese or granulated cheese. Now, with that being said, the Zohar concludes and it says that in a way, the word Shabbat, there is a hidden code in the word Shabbat. So we gave you a few. Let's do one more which is the final statement of the Zohar of today. And it says the Zohar Kadosh, the Shin of Shabbat is a combination of Shin, the three letter that has three legs, so to speak, and Bat. Shin, Bat. What is this Shin? So the Zohar Kadosh explains, the Ot, the letter Shin, has three vavs standing, correct? Beautiful. What is this for? It says, Merumaz le shalosh avot, Abraham, Ishak, and Yaakov. They get united in the essence of Shabbat. Bebat. What is the bat? The Zora Kadosh says, Midat Hamalchut. It says that the Shabbat brings a combination of the kindness of Abraham Avinu, of the discipline or self-control of Ishaq Avinu, and the beauty and Torah learning represented by the Sefira of Yaakov Avinu. And the Zohar Kadosh says, they all unite. Shin, Shelosha, Bat. But means the Kabbalistic a title for the essence of the Shekhinah in our life. I hope that Be'ezat Hashem, with these uh, powerful insights of the Perasha of today, Hukat and Balak, HaKadosh Baruch Hu helps us to have a beautiful Shabbat, a happy Shabbat, an enjoyable Shabbat. Remember what the Zohar said in Perasha Bereshit. Do not run away from the Shabbat. Believe me, if Shabbat can last till Sunday morning, Shabbat has my vote. It's special. Calm, peaceful, enjoyable. At all level, Baruch Hashem. So by Ezat Hashem, let us all make this Shabbat Shabbat Hukat, Shabbat Perashat Balak, to be an uplifting Shabbat, and by Ezat Hashem, may this be the new beginning of our enhancement and beautiful observance in honor of Shabbat Kodesh. Have a great day, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Mevorach, and we say again, Tiskula Mizvot, to the Dweck family for graciously sponsoring the class of today, Miriam Batsara as well as the Kravitz family for graciously sponsoring the class Le'ayun Nishmat, his father, Aharon Rafael Ben Yeshayahu. The both of these yurt sites will be tomorrow, but we gave them an extra bonus round. So this way, the Torah classes have the desired benefit for the respective Neshamot. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And Ba'ezat Hashem, we'll see each other during Shabbat, if you happen to be nearby, otherwise, 
we'll see each other via itorah.com uh, Sunday morning by Ezzet Hashem 9.15 subject to, to change if Mashiach comes Mosai Shabbat have a great day everybody Shabbat Shalom Umevorach